Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stock specific uh, class here for Thursday, July the 14th. As always, if you have any questions during the week or any that I don't get to in the live class, uh, please send those to jerry at traderspro.com. I try to check the, the questions uh, during class. Sometimes they're just comments, so I, I usually, you know, I, I usually don't, um, just to save time, don't really comment on the comments, so to speak. Um, but you're free to, to send comments during class, free to send comments uh, in email as well. But sometimes I do miss a question. Uh, it, 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 and sometimes it might be I'm just out of time. If that happens, uh, don't get offended or don't feel like I don't care. Just uh, please just send that question in an email. I'll be happy to, to get to it. And if it needs to be something that, uh, you know, requires a bigger explanation, uh, instead of uh, typing out a, uh, a, uh, a three three uh, page uh, email. I'll uh, I'll probably just address it in the next uh, live class. So, all right, let's get started. Um, you know, yesterday uh, gave us a little bit of a of a, a, a bullish reversal type candle. Obviously, we dropped today on the um, on the bank earnings, J.P. Morgan. But we're seeing a little bit more of a of a possible bullish reversal candle again. Now that'll depend on how it looks at the end of the day. But I'm going to go when I go through the charts. I'm going to show you that um, that although yesterday was showing the market being down flat to down to today showing that the market is down, um, it, the the price action is actually showing that there there could be some buyers there that could in at least in the short term could push it up a little bit. Now I talked a little bit about the pattern. The different chart patterns uh, that, that I felt could could play out. I talked more in detail on that on a Tuesday in the market update class, so you're free to go back and review that recording to get more details on that. I don't really want to go. I'll review it a little bit here in the live in, in today's live class, but I don't want to just repeat it all uh, for the sake of time here. But um, but that that's a little bit more in depth of of kind of how I think things could play out now. Uh, the bottom line is that there's really a battle going on between buyers and sellers, and, and the market is actually very negative right now. Um, they're, they're not, they're not, um, again, they're not panicky, which is what you see at the bottom, but they're very bearish, which is often it can lead to a little bit of a short-term bounce sometimes, and and um, and sometimes you need those bounces, you need that hope to kind of build again in order, order for the market to crush it. That's what creates that panic selling is when you think, oh, we turned the corner. And that's why it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, you know, I've been talking about, you know, maybe a short-term bounce and then, then rolling over and dropping. But I'm starting to come around a little bit to the possibility that we get a longer uh, rally. And I'll talk probably more about this next week because I'm, I'm going to do some um, analysis of the bigger picture over the weekend, um, you know, look at the, the larger trend that could be taking place. I think this is something that I don't do all the time. I'm usually aware of what the larger, obviously the larger trend is we're down. We've been stair-stepping down for several months now. Um, and sometimes I don't, you know, you, you just kind of get complacent a little bit where you're focused on what's happening right now and what you're seeing right now. What you're seeing, like a, today I'm seeing a bullish a little bit of a bullish reversal in the price action. I get so focused on what's happening today because that could be a very short-term uh, uh, indicator. It could mean the market bounces tomorrow and then and then drops right back down. You could get a bearish reversal candle tomorrow and then you're back to, to being bearish. So the point I'm trying to make is sometimes you lose perspective of, of the bigger picture. And it's always a good idea to, to uh, routinely go through and take some time and look at the bigger chart, look at a weekly chart or a long-term chart, see where, it, are we coming close to key support areas or resistance areas that uh, are likely to, you know, be, uh, be that, that are likely to affect the movement of the trend. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'll see a, the market start moving sideways in an area and, uh, and I'm like, what is going on here? Why are we stuck in this area? And then you back out, and you see that it was a major support area 10 years ago or something, you know. And so uh, then it makes sense. It's like, okay, well, that, that that's why it's kind of stuck right here. Um, so I'm going to do that over the weekend, and I'll I'll, I'll have that uh, presentation on, on Tuesday 
Um, but uh, I, it's just it's it. You can get a panic sell-off when the market is already negative, um, but a lot of times it comes out of nowhere, and then that's what causes that panic is people start to build that hope up again. They're like, oh, okay, I think we turned the corner. I think we're fine, and then bam, it, it hits. And um, it, it, so I'm again, I I have to look at the longer-term charts. And maybe I'll look at longer-term charts and won't come to that conclusion, but. Um, that is something that I'm kind of uh, wondering right now because uh, I've been a little bit surprised that with some of the negative news that's come out lately that we haven't seen a bigger market sell off on that. And, um, and, and it, it leads me to believe that, that, that maybe, you know, we're, we're, the bad news is already kind of baked in that we're, we're in at least in the near term and that we're, uh, uh, you know, we already know things are bad and probably going to get worse uh, before they get better. Uh, as far as the, the direction alerts, we'll get to the charts here in just a second. The direction alerts, again, I've been talking about this the last couple of weeks, not much uh, uh, to, to really discuss here. We're in a, a bear market except for the longer term indicator. Momentum's kind of stuck in the middle. We, we're not overbought or oversold, although I do want to point out that breadth has moved a little bit into the oversold area. Um, it, it, you know, so, um, you know, what does that mean? Well, it could mean you could get a little bit of a bounce when you get in that area there. You could see the market bounce a little bit. Um, but it's not extreme. So, Or it's in the extreme range, but not to the far left, which is usually really extreme. And uh, that can mean that the bounce is imminent. Um, complacency is still really high. The uh, We did see the buy-sell ratios uh, start to widen a little bit. But again, they're not they're not too they're not too extreme yet, uh, meaning that they could continue to trend in those directions, or they could move right back. Sometimes you get in these whip sawing markets, and they you know, they they cross right here, and then they whip right back and cross again, and you know they get they go back and forth. Um, you know that can always happen in here as well. Not a big fan of whip sawing market conditions. Uh, you always tend to work twice as hard for half as much money in those conditions. Um, but I will tell you that the real, the, the, the work you put in to become a better trader, it, it pays off in whip sawing market conditions, your ability to, to recognize those and trade those, um, uh, especially if you're a shorter term trader. Um, yeah, you work twice as hard for half as much money, but usually you're still making money. Where where other people, a lot of people get destroyed in those type of conditions, and um, and then they then they spend the easy money periods just trying to get get back to break even. Where uh, good traders will then be able to really profit during those those um, when the market is really trending. And again, I don't you know. In this class and with this software, you're always looking for a bull market. You're looking for things to go up in value. That's what it's designed to do. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can, we've shown that you can use some of these inverse ETFs to, to make money when markets are dropping and when there are a lot of uh, sectors in uptrends. And uh, it always pays to be able to kind of, to be able to kind of uh, trade both ways if you can. Um, or just recognize when to get out, when to get out and go to cash, and uh, is, is, is also very valuable as well. Uh, sentiment is still right in the middle as well, the sentiment indicator. Let's get to the charts. Oh, I had a question during the week, and it was probably a question some might have. Um, I usually don't have the volume indicator on here just because it's it, it tends to cover up the charts um, like this. It, it, it's just the way that it, it – now, usually it's not the case when you're in uptrends, but the downtrends uh, usually tend to run into those those volume bars, and um, so it's a little bit harder to, to see. Um, so I usually take them out. It doesn't mean that I don't analyze volume. Volume is an important part of, of a, a move. A, a volume is an indication of, um, of uh, conviction, um, significance. So 
if a stock goes up on higher than normal volume, that move is significant. If it goes up on lower than a, than average volume, the, the move is not very significant. It's you, you, you can't trust it as much. Uh, so volume is an important part of this. And I, the question I got was based on the colors, and the the question was focused on the signals. You know, what are what is the significance of the different colors of the volume bars? All the volume bars do are doing in this context here on this chart are matching the uh, signal. So you've got green bars with the when the buy signal is in place. You've got these uh, yellowish bars with the the stock on hold. You've got these red bars when the stock is in a sell. Um, really, you're not going to the, the significance of these colors during the buy and sell and hold is really not that important. Although, I mean, if you if you have a buy signal and you're seeing increasing volume, um, you know that's a, that's a good sign. The 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 volume though on the candlestick chart is is I think very important because um, uh, it's it is telling you some of the of that significance of the move. Um, when you see this gray candle right here, this is telling you the stock opened higher than where or closed higher than where it opened. So it opened right down here at the bottom of the rectangle, closed right here at the top of the rectangle. And the vo so the volume of that day is considered, uh, it, it's, it's considered that the, buy, the buyers were stronger than the sellers. The buying volume was stronger than the selling volume. Um, and that's a, a, a logical conclusion because how else is that stock going to go up in value if, if the buying... Uh, uh, volume or or th th there isn't uh, um, more more confidence in the buying than in the selling. Um, so that's just a you know, just a basic uh, uh, you know conclusion there. The red is just the opposite. The red is where the stock opens at the top of the candle and closes at the bottom. So it closed lower than where it opened. So it went down, and so the volume for that day is considered to be Selling volume, the selling volume is, or sellers are considered to be stronger than the buyers. And again, that would make, be logical that that uh, in order for that price to go down, um, it, you know. Well, and another way you can look at it, you got to remember too that the 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 energy for a stock to go up is greater than the energy for a stock to go down. This is why stocks often fall a lot faster than they rise. Um, to, uh, to, to, in order for a stock to go up, there always has to be buying to push it up. If the buying stops, what happens? The stock will start to drop. Now, is it dropping because there's heavy selling? No, it's dropping because there's no more buyers. The buyers have to prop it up. So if you, if you I don't know if you would be a good analogy here. If you're, you're, but it, well, it's just like you have gravity, right? If you're, if you're not pushing something up, if you stop pushing something up and let go, what's it going to do? It's going to drop. You didn't throw it down, right? Now, you could throw it down, but if you just stop pushing it up, it's going to fall. So if you think of the market as, as having gravity, which it doesn't, but it's not an object, but it's a, a concept here then you, you, it takes more energy to push the market up. And as, as soon as those buyers stop, it, it could drop. So the reason why that's important is if you have an up day on very light volume, we don't, maybe here's, a, here's an example, an up day on very light volume, it's not telling you that the sellers are, are really strong that day. It's just telling you that there's a, a lack of buying. But that lack of buying, why? Why is there a lack of buying? Well, it's probably because the, the the buyers aren't quite sure it could go higher. Uh, the sellers might start to take notice of that. I usually do when I see that something like that, and and um, they might uh, uh, they might uh, decide they, that maybe they want to jump in and start the short sellers. Remember, there's there's also short sellers in the market that actually try to drive prices down with their selling. They sell first. And then they buy back uh, the shares later uh, when it drops, and that's how they make money. So these forces are, are competing against each other. So um, if you see a, a rally, if you see a stock going up, 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 and then it has an up day on light volume, 
um, that's not a good sign. That's that that's usually to mean that the stock could could pull back. Now there are variables that you have to consider in this process. Uh, first of all, um, holidays are notorious for being light volume days. So if you have an up day at the end of a trend going into you know Fourth of July weekend, that doesn't necessarily mean that the market's about to drop uh, because there's no buyers. It means that all the buyers are on vacation. So you do have to factor that in. Um, Heavy volume on option expiration Fridays, uh, usually the main option expiration Friday, which is the third Friday of the month. Um, that that buying and selling those days uh, has sometimes has nothing to do with the future movement of the stock. It might have everything to do with just that, that the stock is about to expire and they've got to exercise an option. And in exercising the option, they might be buying the stock or selling the stock. And so usually, I, I you know, you say, boy, that stock moved up today on heavy volume. And then you're like, oh, it's it's option expiration Friday. I don't want to look too much into that volume move because you're going to have heavy volume every option expir uh, expiration Friday. OK, uh, so I, I was going to I, I didn't have this in my notes to cover this. I wanted to talk about this because I thought that that, uh, that the other people might have the same question. Um, so I'm, it's a little bit of a tangent, but I did, since I didn't have my notes, I didn't want to forget about it. So I, I just went ahead and took care of that right now. Let's get back to um, back to the discussion here. All right, so here's the S&P chart. And again, what I talked about on uh, Tuesday was I, I felt like this this was just wave A, and then I, I, you often have an up, kind of an opposite ABC pattern in the B wave of an ABC pattern. So this was A, B, C, B. And then I think we can move up into this area right here for wave C. And then maybe we drop. Um, now, it's still, it, you know, that was, this was what we were looking at. I said, also I said on Tuesday, we probably could drop down a little bit, get a little bit closer to maybe this. Although we could go a little bit below this low. It doesn't have to stay right here, but there's a little bit of support right here. And so I think, it is a little bit significant that we're right at these lows and look at where we're trading, where we opened today. We opened right at that. We trade a little bit below it, but we're, we're back above it here. Um, now, it's usually unusual. This is a pretty strong bullish reversal candle yesterday. And um, and, and to have a bullish reversal candle on a, on a significant announcement, that was a CPI. Everyone was focused on the CPI number. To have that bullish reversal on the CPI, um, uh, is, you know, is 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 pretty significant because it tells you that they were bearish at the open, and then the buyers came in and they pushed it up, they closed it higher. Now, this is what I'm saying: is if you looked at just the close, if you looked at the nightly news, and they said the S and P was down today, it wasn't down very much, but it was down. Um, you could say, oh, that's bad, that's bad. The CPI number was not good, and the and and the uh, market was down. Uh, this market is going to drop. Well, you're not reading the the price action because yeah, it did open it opened down here, but it closed up here, although still lower than where it closed the day before. So it's showing you're down compared to the day before, but that little subtle momentum change right there that you're up from where you open is significant. Now, obviously we we opened a little bit lower today, but why did we open lower today? Well, J.P. Morgan disappointed, and that they're the first Dow. They kick off earnings season. The first Dow stock that, that reports earnings is the official starter of, of earnings season. It used to be Alcoa for so many years. Alcoa is no longer in the Dow, but I remember it was like, it was always Alcoa, you know, kicked off earnings season. Now it's um, JP Morgan. And so everyone's been waiting for earnings to start and, and, and everyone's been saying earnings are going to probably disappoint. Um, at least everyone I've been hearing, uh, and it would be obvious because we're in a, in a, in a tightening market um, and we're seeing signs of a potential recession. Uh, but anyway, the, the, it's, it's not shocking that we open lower on that. But again, what I want to see is how we close. Now, a lot can happen between now and the market close. This, this thing could fall apart. But it is looking a little bit bullish right now based on those two news events uh, that, that, uh, that, 
there is a little bit of buying there. Now that buying might just be from nervous uh, short sellers. The short sellers are people that are trying to, they're profiting when the market goes down. They sell, they, they, they sell first, they borrow the shares from the broker, they sell first, they bring that money in and then they buy those shares back later, at, hopefully at a lower price. Um, now, if they're a little bit spooked that, that we've dropped or that we could start rallying, they they start to buy back those shares and and um, um, and so it can cause the, the the it's called short covering. You're covering your short position by buying the shares back. And there's a lot of people that dismiss that as oh, this is just a short covering rally, um, meaning that uh, it may not last. There's not true buyers. There's not people coming in buying that, that expect the market to go up. They're they're just buying because they're getting out of their short position. And it is true that short covering is not a strong signal of a uptrend, but it's usually the start of an upward move. It's, it almost always starts with short covering. Um, and then the buyers say, oh, the market's up and maybe things are going to go back up. And then they start jumping in. So uh, that's something to look for. And short covering can really drive the market up fast um, because they don't, they've already made their profit. So they don't care how fast they're buying. They just, they just want to get out and make their money. So, um, they, uh, they uh, uh, tend to jump in a lot, a lot really quickly because if you think about it, their profits are starting to decline if they if they don't get out uh, if, if the stock rises. And so you'll see these really sharp upward moves. Um, well, look right here was a short covering rally back in in uh, March. You had you had a two day move that was really big, and then boom, it kept moving up for like four or five days, um, and then it stalled out. And there was no there was maybe a few new buyers coming in up here, but it didn't hold up. It rolled over and it, and it dropped down. Um, and that's what can create these C legs in a in a bearish correction. Um, you know, they, it starts to move up short covering and then it stalls out and rolls over and then, then the, the sellers kick back, jump back in again. Because these short sellers, they cover down here and then the market rallies up here and they're like, oh yeah, this is weak. It's not going anywhere. There's a bearish reversal candle. I'm going to short that thing again and then it drops again. So that that's what we're looking for. Now, how, now again, we haven't, we're down still. We're still kind of down or, or flat today. Actually, we're down today because we closed up here um what what would be the sign that you know because i'm I'm not saying the market has to rally from here it's looking like it should um but what if it drop how do i know i'm wrong how would i know that uh, that things uh, are, are really not good and we're going to really drop it's hard right here because you could say there's support right here but abc patterns you remember i told you in an abc pattern we were talking about this as a bearish abc pattern and a bearish abc pattern wave c will usually get uh, beyond the end of wave A. The only exception to this is if you have a real flat ABC correction, meaning wave A comes down here, wave B comes all the way back up, and then wave C comes all the way back down. Usually, but usually that's very a very distinctive sideways um, uh, sideways uh, trend. So, in other words, if 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 this was wave A and wave B came all the way down to here. And then we came back up into here. That could still that could be the end of wave C right there, and it could drop out of that. But when it's only a partial move, if that's wave B is only that partial retracement, then wave C should go beyond the end of of wave A. So what we're looking at here is that again, this is wave A, and then that we're looking at the smaller possible ABC pattern here. And so it did dip below this low right here. And that's all it needed to do. That could be wave B, but it could also go a little bit deeper. It could go down into here, and that could still be wave B. And then you get wave C, and then you drop. Um, so really, the the where we're going to know we're wrong is down here. We break below there, then obviously, obviously this this was probably the the correction, the bearish ABC. I didn't know that's rare that the wave C would end right there, and we're in a in a downtrend. Um, how do we know that we're we're right? Well, I think I talked about this on Tuesday that it's possible that um, well, it's it's possible that a few things happen. It's possible that uh, 
that this is wave A and this is wave B, but it just bounces in this range for a little while and then goes up and then comes down. We could be stuck in this kind of sideways range. We could be stuck at a, we could come all the way down into here and then back up into here and back down into here and still be in a sideways correction, correcting this move down. And then it could drop. So, you know, if it can get above here, that would be more bullish. That would kind of confirm that that uh, at least at least for a little bit, we should rally up a little bit further. Maybe not much. As I mentioned, that this is a key. This is kind of the key support area or or resi uh, key resistance area after this one. This is a big one right here. The next one is probably right up in in that this area right there. This is where it, it gapped down. So it would come up and fill in that gap and then roll over maybe. Again, I'm not I'm not trying to predict here. I'm just trying to look at different um, possible scenarios um, so that I'm not caught off guard. That's why I'm pointing this out to you. This is where we know that this is bearish. <laughs> this is clearly bearish if we if we drop down below this low right here. Because now we've gone to a lower low. This would confirm a, a, a lower high, and um, the downtrend is continuing. But uh, again, another possibility is because this ties into what I'll be talking about next week. What I'm going to kind of look into a little bit next week is that um, so when you're stair stepping down. You get wave A, wave B, wave C, wave A, wave B, wave C, and then very often trend reversals happen with a a impulsive move down followed by an impulsive move up, um, and then you get you look for corrective, and then impulsive up again. Well, initially this could be this could be just another bearish ABC pattern that rolls over. But if, as it starts to break out to higher highs, and then and it's and then the pullbacks are choppy and more choppy and sideways, you recognize that hey, I'm in a trend reversal. This is actually reversing its trend. So it, this is it's possible that this is a bottom and this is a trend reversal. This is a start of the move. This is a bullish ABC pattern, and then we get a move up, and then we get another bullish ABC pattern, and get a move up. That would that's possible. I got to recognize that so that, you know, I don't get, if it, if it gets up in this area here and doesn't reverse and keeps going higher and breaks above this, this is, remember, this is a key area right here. If we get above this, this was the last lower high uh, before we reach this lower low right here. If we break above that, that would be a new higher high. And we have to recognize at that point that, that uh, the trend is, is starting to re reverse. So there, there's still a lot of uncertainty. I mean, in this area here, what we're dealing with is just a lot of uncertainty in this whole area of what could play out. And, and, and again, I don't know whether the market's going down or going up. Uh, nobody does. Um, but when it's it, it, at certain points, the behavior will start to tilt towards uh looking more bullish or looking or, or looking bearish. It looks like the trend's continuing to move down. Looks like the trend could be reversing. And so you just have to be will you have to recognize these these key signals and just be willing to to change. You can, you just can't hold on to a bias. As much as I am bearish right now and as much as I'm waiting for that panic sell off, I can't get so dug in with that that I ignore what's actually going on. Because uh, that's how you get destroyed, and and so so again, if I start to see the market really showing signs that it's it's trending back up, man, these classes where we go over new new trades, I'm going to be jumping into a lot of them because um, because I I'm, I'm going to you know want to take advantage of that. All right, so that uh, is the S&P chart. That's what we're, we're kind of focused on here. Kind of see how things close today. Like I said, if we close higher, right now we're a little bit of an indecision candle, but that's fine. Indecision candles, um, that's a good sign because you, you've been pulling back right here and then you're getting a bullish reversal candle and an indecision candle. That means that there's there's a contemplation that maybe we should be rallying, 
and uh, you know, see this is here's an indecision candle right here. Now, what you'd want to see if this closes this way, um, and even if we close near the highs today, what you'd want to see tomorrow or Monday is a, a at some point a close above the high of the previous day. Notice how during this drop, we didn't have a close above the high of the previous day. Here is the high of the previous day. We didn't close above it. Here is the high of the previous day. Now here we traded up close to it, but again, it's a close above the high of the previous day. Um, and so you're looking at that as confirmation here that this downward move could be be done. And then if, it, if we rallied up tomorrow, we end up closing above the high of the previous day, that could be the start of a, of a move higher. You can see, now again, it doesn't always work. Um, but it, it's a little, you know, you see this little drop right here. When did we close? Here was an indecision candle. And then we closed above the high of the previous day right here. Now, we still opened lower the next day. It still tried to go lower, but it did have a little bit of a bounce. Now, here was an indecision candle at the top. Indecision candles don't always mean you're going to get a reversal. It's just, it's a, it, it means that the move is being questioned. And you always need confirmation. But what happened the next day? We closed below the low of the previous day. That was the confirmation that, that we could drop a little bit. Um, now, again, like I said, it doesn't always work. We, here was a drop right here. Here we closed above the high of the previous day. And it, but guess what? I got whips out, out of a couple of trades right there. I got, I got caught on the wrong side. But guess what? That's going to happen because nothing you analyze and nothing you do is always going to work out. These clues, I'm telling you, they're probabilities, but they're not absolutes. You're, you're going to have times where it doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, don't say, oh, Jerry, you're, you're, you're I was going to say another word. You're full of crap. <laughs> Just because what you had happened was the lower probability move. And, and if you're, you know, it's like, it's like, a, it's like watching a, a sports team that's a dynamite sports team you know, a basketball team is probably the best example because, uh, well, a football team is probably the best example because usually the best football teams uh, don't lose very many games. You have a, just an a, a incredible, you're 10-0 and 0 and you're destroying everybody. And, and Jerry says, come to the football game with me. Uh, this team is incredible. And you go to the football game and they have a bad game and they lose. And you say, why did you tie me into this? This is the crappiest football team ever. No, you just happened to be there on the one day that they lost the game, which almost every football team does. But you're, you can't distort the, the reality of what it, – it's a great team. So you, you, these are probabilities, but you, they're, they're sometimes – I can't get bent out of shape because it didn't work that time. By the way, this is, I, this is a bad analogy because this – you know, getting in on a close above the high of the previous day is not a – it's it, – you can't make that a primary strategy. It's, it, 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 it's, it, you need to have context to it um, because it, it, it does, it does falter more often uh, than, than other, other uh, indicators, but it's very strong when it's, when it's in context, meaning, you know, in this case, we have a, a impulsive move up. It looks like a bullish ABC pattern right here. If this is a C leg, if I get a close above the high of the previous day, in that context, there's a very, a very strong probability this is going to move up again. It doesn't tell, mean it's going to move up forever, but the very the next day you should see a move higher, or within the next couple of days you should see a move higher out of out of something like that. So, I just caught myself there because if you if you're just if you're going to try to make I believe me I tried to do this make that your strategy. Oh, well, this is simple. Every time I see a close above the high, if it's been dropping and it closed above the high the previous day, I'm going to I'm going to go long. It's, it's, and, and then I'm going to get out as soon as it closes below the low of the previous day. Um, so I'm going to get in uh, on a close above the high of the previous day, and I'm going to get out when it closes below the low of the previous day, and that's always going to work. No, there's a lot of whipsaws in there. It's very short term, very temporary. But like I said, if you put it, if you use it in context, um, then it can be, a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty strong signal. All right, so that's what I'd be looking for tomorrow. And who knows? Maybe tomorrow we're dropping, we're dropping down below here. Then you'll know that I'll be like, uh-oh, that's bad. We're, we're this downtrend is continuing. I need to buy some.
some uh, SARK and some uh, SOXS to, to hedge the portfolio. By the way, I'm going to be stopping out of my uh, the the, the uh, other. Well, I'll get to that here in a second. All right. So again, I'm I'm kind of skipping over the other indexes. I I do spend time on the other indexes for those that are new. It's just right now they're all moving in the same way, and so it's just a uh, you know I just be repeating the same thing. So, but there are times where they aren't moving in the same way, and and I will comment on what that could be telling us. Um, now, bonds, I think it's important here because we were talking about this on on Tuesday. This looked like a bearish ABC pattern. We had dropped. We were rallying up a little bit, but we had this little bearish reversal candle, and that did work. Remember, these some of these candle formations are very short term. We were rallying up. We opened higher, we opened up here, we traded up here, and then we closed lower than where we opened, but we were still higher than the day before. That's a weak price action. You see that? That's very weak. It, it almost always leads to a drop the next day, but that's all it tells. It, it's not saying it's going to drop for the next 10 days. Now, if you have another chart pattern that says, you know, if I have a, if I have a bearish ABC pattern at the top of that C leg, I get a, a, a bearish reversal candle where it gaps up and it closes lower than where it opened, but still higher than the day before. Yeah, I could conclude that that not only should this be down the next day, but because this looks like a bearish ABC pattern, we should be it should be kickstarting a larger move down. I could, I could, I could use some of these really short term indicators to project out into into bigger expectations, but still, even then, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always mean it's got to drop big, but you just got to make sure you're not. Anytime you see this price action, you're not saying, "Oh boy, this thing's going to drop um, big." But it did drop because look where it opened. Look where, it, look where we uh, opened the next day. This was yesterday. We opened down here, so it did drop off of that weak pattern, but then it rallied back up. That was a strong move, strong bullish reversal yesterday, and it it really is starting to. We're, we're at a critical area here on on bonds. I still think bonds are going to go lower, but what that move told me yesterday is maybe this correction. I thought the correction was done there. I thought that was a bearish ABC pattern. Yeah, I told you though. Sometimes you don't always get the. It's it's not always a clear one two three or ABC move. Sometimes it'll it'll throw a little loop where it'll it'll go back and forth a little bit a couple times and then drop. Um, that might be what's happening here. The key area that we got to watch, though, is this high right here. You know, we're not too far away from it because that was the the previous lower high after or before we hit this lower low right here. Here's the last lower low. Where was the higher or lower high before that right here? By the way, you need to learn how to see this that stair step because this is always going to be important as far as recognizing um, momentum shifts. Um, here's here, so if you're starting to rally up right here and you're wondering, is that the bottom or is that the low? Can I buy into this? You don't want to buy just because it's down, because this thing could go a lot lower. But okay, you went to a lower low right there. Okay, draw a line along that low. And then where was the previous high before that? You just follow this move up. There's the previous high right there. Any move above that would be more bullish. Any move down below there is more bearish. And you're kind of in no man's land in this area right here. We're, we're kind of in no man's land. We could just go back and forth. We could do weird things in this area here. So that's the key area. This is the key area. It's acting corrective right now because it's more choppy. I would tell you though, if it if it drop, you have a little bit of a shorter term, you know, within the correction, you can get high. Obviously, you get higher highs, higher lows in a smaller scale. You got a higher high right here, higher low, higher low right here. If we dip down below this low, it's more likely we're headed down to the down to back down to this low. Now we could still just be moving sideways. If we drop below here, it means that downtrend is continuing. But uh, any move below this low would probably mean that we're at least heading back down into here. 
that makes sense. So there's a there's a larger context in a in a smaller context. You know, when we talk about ABC patterns, you, know, you get you look at a long term chart and you see a large you see this you see these large moves, these large stair steps. You have the large stair step. And then if you look closely in the, this move right here, you'll see these smaller stair steps. We call these fractals. These smaller stair steps are building, and, and, and then get, so these are larger corrections, and these are smaller corrections. So you have smaller corrections within these larger moves. So the, 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 these smaller stair steps are creating the larger stair steps. The smaller trends are creating the larger trends. Oh, I'm going over a lot of I'm way off I'm way off on tangents today but hopefully and this is I do cover almost all the stuff in those training videos on uh if you go to the YouTube page and subscribe to Traders Pro it doesn't cost anything to subscribe just subscribe and you'll get access to a lot of training videos there that you can that I go into a lot of this stuff in, in a little bit more detail um but so now with that bullish reversal, I was kind of expecting that, that, that bonds might break out above this high. We're, we're kind of right in the middle here. So we're, we're still kind of waiting to see what the movement will be. Um, so, it, it, but that's uh, so far we're still in this downtrend. So I'm assuming that this is going to continue to move lower, um, but we'll keep an eye on that. Gold is in a downtrend. I talked about this on Tuesday, though, because it was starting to get um, oversold. We're at the, the left side of that reversal risk, and so we're probably due for a little bit of a bounce. So if you're and and you, so you're due for a little bit of a bounce, you're oversold. And what are you getting today? You're getting a little bit of a bullish reversal candle right here. It got down, opened right here, traded a little bit lower. Now it's trading higher than where it opened. Now that could change going into the close. We're that these candle patterns are based off of how they look at the close because they can take different forms during the day. And if it slid all the way down and closed at the lows between now and the market close, that would be a bearish candle or more of a bearish bearish price action there. But this now, so all we're really expecting here is that we're probably – going to go into a, a little bit of we could rally up a little bit or we can start to move sideways moving sideways can alleviate an oversold condition and then maybe it drops again if you have a really sharp impulsive move up though it, it might be you know you get impulsive down impulsive up there's always a possibility you could be a reversing trend then you'd look to see if the next correction is more choppy and 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 then if it has another impulsive move up maybe the trend is reversing But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It, there's. It's too risky to. To. Well, you could. I mean, you could. If you're just expecting just to bounce off of uh, an oversold condition with a bullish candle, it, it's an aggressive entry. But if you're going to be aggressive, that's that's enough confirmation that we should at least bounce a little bit or rally a little bit in gold. I don't have a problem with someone making a very short-term trade off of that. Uh, but we're still in a downtrend, so you don't want to do too many of those types of trades where you're going counter to the trend, because um, they can, they can, because it could just be a real. These are real short-term indicators, so it could mean you get a bounce and then bam, it, it drops. Let me see if I can find an example. Um, well, here's a little bit of a bullish reversal formation right here. It bounced a little bit, and then it went sideways and then it got crushed here. Here's here's a little bit of a bullish reversal candle went up the next day, but then look, it just right back down, moving moving sideways. It doesn't always mean that um, you know you wouldn't want to have a long term trade based off of that, right? Or going against the trend, just try to guess or guess at a bottom. All right, uh, U.S. oil, um, U.S.O. for oil.
you know, everyone's been talking about how bad oil has been today, but there again, it's a little bit of a bullish reversal candle. Now, again, we got this back in here. We did bounce off of that. I did, I wanted a little bit more confirmation here and, and for good reason. Um, and I, you know, I still would, you'll probably get a bounce in oil right here, but I don't know if I want to jump back into oil stocks just yet. Um, you know, because there, if we're just starting a potential recession, that that be that would be pretty bearish for oil, really lighten the demand for oil. Um, I'd want to see a little bit more confirmation on that before getting in. The, the dollar, we were getting we are getting extreme in the dollar. Now, what is that right there? That's a bearish reversal candle. We opened up right here. We're looking to close again. Have to wait till the close. But if it holds that, that would be we're we're lower than where we opened, but still higher than where we close. Here's where we closed the day before. So everyone's talking about the dollar and how strong the dollar is, and the dollar is up again. And but this is showing that we're probably gonna again very short term indicator. We should either we should get a pullback right here, but it might just be a little bit of a correction. Here was one right here. So here's a bearish reversal candle, and it dropped, and then it kind of tried to rally again and dropped, kind of went into a correction. Didn't drop very much though, so it's not like it which it reversed the trend there. It just started. It it signaled the start of a possible correction, and that's where I think is probably going to go on right here. We'll get a little bit of a, of a correction. Now, this this just came to mind right here, so this wasn't part of my notes. But you know, th this we are looking at. We're in this class. We're looking for bullish trends, or or, or you know, looking to participate in bullish moves. Um, what could if if I think the dollar could go down, what could go up? What's an opposite usually of the dollar? You could you usually look at the euro. Which the ETF for the trading the euro is the FXE. And look at the euros having a little bit of a bullish reversal candle right here. Now, again, I'm not saying the euro is going to take off and go up. Um, it, it's going to start a new uptrend. It could, but it could bounce, it could, you know, it, it could just be going up and then it's. You know, has a bearish ABC pattern that drops some more. But if you were looking at that chart, saying, "Man, I, I, I want to take advantage, maybe take advantage of a short-term move," you know, you could you could trade the FXE if you're if you're looking at an opposite trade of the dollar, and vice versa. You know, if you think the FXE is going to start dropping, it really looks like it's going to drop, but you want to be long, go to the UUP and you can trade. You can be long the UUP. The VIX, uh, again, it had a bearish reversal candle yesterday. That's why I was a little bit more bullish on it. Same kind of thing today, though. It, it opened a little bit higher. It's trading now near the lows. Um, it's acting like it still it wants to go down, which means it, it's leaning more towards the market. That should mean the market should go up. But Now, I wouldn't say the VIX is telling us anything strong today. Um, it doesn't always tell us anything, uh, something significant every day. Um, but it, it's definitely not showing any any strong concern or fear. And we've had these two somewhat negative events, so it, it's important to say that, well, the market doesn't seem to be freaking out over it. At least professionals don't seem to be freaking out over it. Chip stocks look like there's another reason why I'm a little bit more bullish in the short term. Remember, the chip stocks tend to be a leading indicator for the NASDAQ 100, the the, the the tech stocks, because all of those, most of those companies rely heavily on chips. Um, this is forming a very similar pattern to what we're just looking at. In fact, it seems to be moving more. Obviously, it's up today where the market is still kind of down. But this looks like maybe wave A, wave B, wave C, and then maybe we roll over again. Who knows? Um, but it, it looks, it looks like it's moving higher right here. It looks, it looks. In the short term, it looks pretty bullish. You can see if it can get out above here. That's a, that was support back here, resistance here, resistance here. If we break above that, 
I think that'd be pretty significant and could be a lot, very bullish for the market if if it if it does that. So that's something I'll be watching. But even the fact that the chips are up pretty strong today with with market being down is is a pretty bullish uh, indicator in my book. Um, that's why we look at this. We're comparing this to the uh, the Nasdaq 100. Since we didn't go over the Nasdaq 100, let me just pull up that chart here. Well, actually, Nasdaq 100 has gone positive, so it's. But it's again, it's not. Here, it's not. Um, you know, the, it it doesn't look like it's. It, we won't know if it's in its wave C until it breaks above here. So that would be the difference there when we're looking at the SMH. Is it? It already looks like it's moving above. It's already in that wave C, so it's kind of leading. Looks like it could be leading the way a little bit right there. Now, if, if we're expecting this to be wave C and then it's going to go reverse down, then then we might see a bearish reversal candle here pretty soon. And again, that might be so. We might see chip stocks actually start to go down a little bit prior to the QQQs. The QQQs might still be going up, but that could be telling us that they might not go up very much longer. And that we could start to see a drop there. So that's that's what you that's what you're looking for with leading indicators. You're looking for um, some sort of divergence or uh, not not behaving the same way as the as the other the, uh, as the lagging indicator. And we don't want to base an entire trade off of this that stuff. It's it's just one of a number of things you want to analyze. But and then the transports you're comparing to the Dow Industrials. Uh, transports have a little bit of a bullish reversal. They're right down here. Remember, this thing could come all the way down into here. If this is the start of the move up, this is A, B, C. So this is wave A, wave B. It can come all the way down into here, and then wave C. So, but if, but if we see transports break below here, and the Dow hasn't, then that could be a very that could tell us it doesn't tell you it's going to happen immediately it could just it could mean that the market then tries to rally one more time but it, and then it then it drops but often you'll see the transports you, you would see the transports drop below this low before the industrials do um and if they do it the same day then it's just it's it it, it was it, it 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 didn't give you the early signal it doesn't always give you the early signal but it is it, it in if you see it drop, uh, well, give me an example. The Russell 2000 is another one that tends to be a leading indicator of the indexes. And what happened with the Russell 2000 back here, I can pull the chart up. Let's go to a longer term chart. Actually, I might have to go to a two-year chart because it's been a while since I talked about this. So the Russell was stuck in this range. While the, all the other indexes were making new all-time highs, the Russell was stuck in this range. It wasn't, now it did go to a briefly do an all-time high right here, but it wasn't going to new all-time highs. And even here after this, the, the us other markets were going to all-time highs and it wasn't. But when it broke this range, it broke this range and the other markets were still looking okay, but this was saying this was saying uh -uh, this is there's something wrong with this route. This rally may not continue. But it, again, this is how long it could last. These were this was a warning sign that things weren't all that great when the market was still going. The other indexes were going higher, but it, it's not something I would have made a decision on to go. It, it's not an immediate decision. It's it's this is this is this is not good. Um, how can you use that in your investing? Well, you know, you have a big run up like this. This was a sh sharper run up than the other indexes. This was leading the way up and then it stalled out right here. So as the other indexes are going higher and you're seeing this stall out, you're saying, uh, maybe I don't want to be, uh, you, you still could be bullish, but you, you know, maybe you're not expecting the, uh, you're, you're probably getting closer to a top or getting closer to a, a bigger pullback at that point. And so you just got to be aware of it. You tuck that in the back of your mind. Okay, we're getting a little divergence there in the, in the chip and the 
in the small caps, they're not participating as much. And then when they break, they broke first. Okay, now I need to lighten up. If you remember back, you can go back all these recordings. I don't know how how many recordings I have, how far back they go. But um, the, the, when we broke below that, it was like, okay, we need to start tightening up stops. We need to start getting a little bit more defensive in our our trades. At least it doesn't mean you jump out of uptrends, but you start you start to look for the cracks. You start to look for, oh, oh we just went to a lower low. That's not good. That. I don't want to. I don't want to remain overly bullish here. I don't want to remain. The, I don't want to buy every dip anymore, um, or at least be very cautious in it. Um, and so, what could happen here with the small caps is we could start to see this. And they don't. They sometimes they do at the same time as the other indexes. But um, you know, if the small caps break above this high right here before the other indexes do, then that's that would be a. Or if they break below this low before the other indexes do then then you would you would uh you want to pay attention to that because that 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 could be a, a little bit of a warning that uh, there's still further to drop it like i said it doesn't always give you the early clue but that's why you look at it in case it does you, you, you to pay attention to it in case it does and then bitcoin just uh, we talked about this too that it it should resume the downtrend once this is done but it could stay in the sideways range. Right, today's a little bit of a bullish day. All that tells me is it's probably going to work its way back up to the top part of this range. You know, if it breaks out above that, you can pay pay attention. That, but then you'd want to see it break out and have higher lows, higher highs, start acting like an uptrend. If it breaks below here, obviously it's continuing the downtrend. All right, portfolio. Now, I, I didn't mean to really make this a long class day, but hopefully hopefully it's helpful. If it's helpful to someone, then then I'm I'm happy about that. If if I'm boring some of you, then I apologize. But um the, the, these are a lot of these things I cover today are little things that I wouldn't necessarily think to put into a course if I was teaching a course. They're just things I learned over the years. You know, it's it's like being a doctor. You, you learn things in medical school, but you don't learn every single thing about being a doctor in medical school. There's a lot of things you just pick up experience, with experience over the years. Yeah, this is what they taught me in medical school, but I found in real life it's better to do this or it's, it, it's more effective to do this. There's these little things that you wouldn't think to include in a, in a course. And, and, and the way to get them out of me is just – if I'm riffing a little bit, if I just see something and it just triggers, hey, this is this is something that, that was helpful to me that I rec learned to recognize, a clue that I learned to recognize, and I can pass that on to you. But um, anyway, let's get into some stocks. <laughs> the whole purpose, an hour into the class, we're getting into the, into the whole purpose of the class. All right, portfolio, I, I'm going to stop out of RCMT. It did go below my, I, I actually did go below this earlier today, but I thought I'd just wait to class to do it. Uh, my stop was below here. We were close to it here. Remember on Tuesday, I said we're light, we're probably going to go below it. We did have a little bit of a bullish reversal candle yesterday, so I thought, and, and we weren't below that low, so I thought, well, you know, hold it, no reason to get out just yet, but today... And who knows, it could rally up into the close above there, but I, I just don't like the fact it's down below there. Um, I could always get back in again. But um, now, in, it, I will tell you, though, in, in real life, I like to wait till right before the close to make the, the decision. Um, I do like a close below my stop to get out. But like I also mentioned earlier, though, if, you, if you're not disciplined to be able to stop out, if you're like, maybe I'll give it one more day, that's not good. You, you need to use a, an actual stop loss order to take that decision away from you so that you can develop your discipline. But let's go ahead and stop out of RCMT. Four hundred shares in the current price is seventeen sixty six. So I'm gonna have almost a thousand dollar loss. 
but I knew that going into the trade. I knew it was that I hopefully you were you know if you you see that amount, hopefully you can accept that. So let's go ahead and sell that. Now the one I want to add. This actually showed up on the new buy list yesterday, but I also um, oh shoot uh, I I am my the name I was watching CNBC I'm trying to remember his name it's one it's a one of the traders I I respect there's a lot of traders on uh, there's a lot of the panels on the traders on the panels on CNBC that are not worth listening to oh josh josh is the one that um pointed this out and i and the reason why it was significant was i i heard him talk about it and then i saw it immediately on the new buys uh, new buy list i'm like well it, it, you know i don't like to buy things based off of what anyone talks about on cnbc but if they talk about it and then i see it i see the chart and the chart looks good or i see it in the software the software is saying it, it looks pretty good then you know, I don't mind trading it just because they talk. But just don't ever trade something on CNBC because somebody talks about it or say, or says, even if they make a compelling argument, always look at the chart. I've heard some people rattle off, you know, 10 minutes worth of numbers and, you know, people are going to buy this and this product and this is going to be the next hottest thing. And I pull up the chart and it's in a, a, a steep downtrend. I'm like, I'm not, maybe you're right. But the chart is saying, don't buy it yet. It's not trending up yet. Uh, I'm going to wait till the chart tells me. So always, um, well, and you're going to get that from me. I'm a technical trader. The technicals, the charts are always going to be more important than the fundamentals to me. So um, that's where I'm going to put more weight on is what is the chart telling you. But I went under, uh, it's under, um, Finance and because it it was uh, yesterday, it should be a buy now. It should be under the buys. It's not a new buy anymore. But this is it, this this is Encore Capital Group ECPG, 97 strength rank. So it has a nice high strength rank. And what I really loved about this is I love these stocks that look like they're forming. They they're, look like they're going up the right side of the bowl. Because the one of the best patterns to trade is what we call a cup with handle pattern where it, you're in an uptrend and then you drop and then you just kind of base a little bit right here and then you start to move back up. And when you get back up to this high right here, a lot of times you'll move sideways for a little bit. And so that's why it's called a cup with handle. Here's your handle, here's your cup. And when it breaks out of these, the reason why we love these patterns and, and we'll get these by the way, that's what I'm saying. You want to get excited about the future. When you're coming out of bear markets, you get tons of these cup with handle patterns. And when they break out above the top of the cup, you can take the distance from the top of the cup to the bottom of the cup and you can project that upward. And that's, that's kind of a minimum target of where they often get to. Now, this is an exact, I got to point that out, and it doesn't mean it's going to go straight there, but... Um, it tends to get to those levels. So you have a, a very high probability bullish trade when you find these patterns. And again, you still have to manage them. You have to have stop losses and things like that. But if you understand that pattern, then what can happen is you can recognize when it's in its early stages. It drops. You see it kind of round out. And now down here, you see it start to hit higher highs, higher lows, because it'll start stair-stepping as it's making that pattern. And you can get in and you can trade it right here to, to here. And then maybe get out of it because you don't want to be in it when it moves sideways and then get back in it when it breaks out. You can have multiple trading opportunities off of those. Let me back out to a one-year chart on this so you can see this develop in a little bit more detail. So see what I'm talking about? Big run up right here. It's dipped down and now it's starting to roll over. Now this is important because this is how you can tell it's starting to roll over, lower highs, lower lows. Here's a little bit of a head fake because it did go to a uh, – here was the lower high after, uh, before that previous lower low, and it did go above there. It did go to a higher high, but it came right back down and went to a lower low. But that that was an early sign right there that maybe you were reversing trend. Just didn't do it right away. Followed that up with a lower high, lower low, and then 
Again, this is the lower low. This is the lower high before that, and then it broke out above that the other day. Now, could it do the same thing as it did right here and come right back down? Yep, you got to watch for that. But what I like about the the explanation that I've never heard of this company before, but the, the, the what this company does is they they're a debt collector. They're the largest debt collector, I guess, in in the country. So if you're going into recession and you got interest rates rising, your credit card bill is twice the amount it used to be, and you're paying twice the amount in, in gas that you were before, and you're losing your job because you're going into recession, what's likely to happen? You're, you're going to have people that are going bankrupt or, or getting behind on their bills. and So now, I wouldn't go buy it just for that reason, okay? But if I see a chart like this, and I see a compelling fundamental reason, that I could I could get behind. I love it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, now it's it, it it's a down, down day today. I didn't want to chase it yesterday, and I probably could wait to see if it pulls back even further. But I think the market could rally, and I think this will rally with it. Uh, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in, and I'm going to put a here was the last here's a here so here's the kind of the stair step right through here. Here's the last little correction right here. I'm gonna put it right below that. Um because there's a lot of re, there's strong resistance here. We dipped a little bit below this resistance here today, so um there's support back here in this area right here. So this is very strong right here. If it pulls back and it's still in this bowl move. If it comes all the way down, if it comes below here, it doesn't. It, it looks like this is another false breakout here. So I'd be a little bit concerned about that. So I'm going to put my stop in at 59. Just kind of below this area right here. And then I I want to kind of leave this one alone a little bit. As long as it doesn't get stopped me out, I, try, I don't want to get bounced out of this one because I, I, I think it's going to work its way higher. Although I thought that way with some of the agricultural stocks and they collapsed on me but um, um but what did i do i didn't just stick to the fundamental argument well they're gonna you know with with uh ukraine not producing wheat somebody else has got to produce it and that's going to be big demand for fertilizer and things like that um well the chart told me to get out and i got out i stopped out it didn't, uh, you know, the chart was the reason why I, I made, that I made the, the reason for the decision. All right, so we're going to add this. What did I say the stop was? 59. So we're going to add this to the portfolio. Stop at 59. Number of shares, what did one about one? That's 150. 150. Yep, that's it. 9,000 shares or 9,000 cost, 150 shares. I like to keep again the transaction price right here between about seven to 10,000 is what I'm trying to keep it. Doesn't have to be exact. I mean, if, if I if I want to add a little, few more shares and get over 10,000, that's fine. You just want to keep it in that range. You're looking at keep it in the range. But this isn't the only important thing you're trying to manage. I also have to manage risk. I have my stop there. What damage would be done if I get stopped out? Well, this is actually really good. I'm, I, I get stopped out. Usually I don't want this portfolio at risk number to be more than one and a half percent. It's only a half a percent. It's even better. But this would be the theoretical dollar amount I would lose if I get stopped out. Am I willing to risk that? Am I okay with that amount? If I'm not, I got to lower the amount of shares, and if I lower the amount of shares, it it it's it's going to bring that risk amount down. And let's say, oh, I can only handle 300. Okay, then you're doing a you know 75 shares or something like that. You're doing half the trade. You have to because you have to manage that. You got to be okay with this. But I'm more than okay with this because I'm at a one and a half percent. I'm willing to risk. $1,500 usually on every trade if I've got about 10,000 of my portfolio in there. Uh, and so this is even better. I'm looking at this like this is great, especially for the potential reward. So let's go ahead and purchase that. 
And again, my target is probably going to be up here, but you know, I'm not going to just jump out. What I'll do is I'll get up here, then I'll see if there's a pullback somewhere. Let's say we get a pullback and then it gets up to there. I'll just move my stop up and I'll move it up into there. And then what I want to see is how it behaves up here. Does it move sideways for a while where it looks like it's forming that handle? If I think it's chopping around right there, I might get out. Because I can always get back in. I'm going to keep an eye on it. And if it breaks out again, I'll jump in. And Or if you just don't want to, you just want to forget about it and just you know, be very long term on it. You could just, uh, then you probably want to put your stop down here. And just forget about it. Because if it goes below here, then we're wrong. This is not a bull. And we're wrong. And um, but you're give, you're allowing yourself a little bit wider because again you're not going to be watching this right. You're just going to let it go and try to you know just don't want to pay you know just want to don't want to get bounced out of it. All right, a couple other real quick ones. Uh, I don't love the sec. I don't like to trade utilities, but there are some compelling patterns in here that I will point out, X, X, e, e, X, C, right here, Exelon Corp, 95 strength rank. I guess I could put the signals on here. This looks, we have to go back in context here for some of you that are newer. You can see it's a larger uptrend right here. This looks like a larger bullish ABC pattern, a larger correction. And then you have this little move up right here, and this looks like a correct an ABC correction of that move. About a 50% retracement of that move. This was this larger one was about a 50% retracement of this move up. So this looks like a little bit of a smaller bullish ABC pattern. At the very least, I'm targeting it to get back up to the previous high. You could manage it beyond that, but if it could just get up to there, that'd be a, a That'd be a nice trade. Well, it'd be very close to a two to one reward risk. I'm going to put my stop. Well, if I did get into this, I'm going to wait for confirmation on this one. But if I did put my, I'd probably put my stop down below here because that's where I know I'd be wrong. And you got about just about a two to one reward to risk if you got out up here, which is good. That's a, kind of a minimum for me. If, can I can make at least two times what I'm risking. But that could change a little bit if you're waiting for confirmation waiting for it to go back to a buy signal, which that'd be the an easy confirmation here. It is a bullish reversal candle today, right at what looks like the end of a wave C, bullish engulfing pattern, bullish reversal. That's very short term though. This is all this is saying is it should go up the next day or within the next day or two. You can have, a, you can always have a pause day. You always have to, you don't always, with, with the, all these reversal days, you don't want to assume that they always have to work immediately. They, they usually work within a couple of days. So. But the reason why I think this could lead to a bigger move is if this is a, a start of a move up and this is a bullish ABC pattern and this is a bullish reversal candle, that could lead to a continuing trend up. So um, that's how you can use these shorter term price action moves to, to come to a large, longer term conclusion. Uh, another one is under the buy uh, section here of utilities. I went through some of these buy sections. So sometimes you see some that just went to a buy signal and they have a nice pattern. This TAC 92 strength rank. This is so you had a high right here, and then you had a V-shaped move, and then it's consolidating at this high again. Traders bought it right back up to here. And now they're deciding whether they think it's worth worth it to break out. Now, on this one, I just wait for the breakout. Wait for it to break out above here. Because if it breaks out above here, same type of concept. You can take the distance from the top of that V, just like if it was a bull, and you can project that upward, and it gives you kind of a minimum target doesn't always go there but um most most of the time it does which is why which is why these patterns jump out to me um 
but this one you probably just put the watch list. let's just put this one in the watch list um, so we can kind of keep an eye on it see if it breaks out Um, oh, I, this one I wanted to show as an example of a buyout. I've told you if you see this type of chart pattern, that it's that don't go jump into it. It's not a doesn't mean that stock's going to take off and go up. But if you go under finance, um, and it was this ACC right here, American Campus Community. So this is trend, this is going up, 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 and then it gaps up real big, and then it flatlines. The stock isn't going to go anywhere. What this, what's happening right here is some company is going to acquire the stock for about whatever that is, sixty-four dollars and fifty cents or something. And so the stock went right to that price, and it fluctuates a little bit, but it's not it's not going to go anywhere because this company is going to be buying the shares for that amount. And and then they're going to acquire the company. It's now once it get, gets merged into the other company, you can find out what that other company is. And if you want to own shares of that company as well, it, it, these shares are now going to become part of that company, though. And you'd have to look at that chart to see whether you'd want to continue to hold them. But don't you know? Sometimes these we haven't found a way to eliminate it out of the software. It'll, it'll show strength because it, it moved up. It'll show a higher strength rank, and and you know you'll look at this and say, boy, that was a big move right here. Maybe this is giving me a chance to get in. No, that's that's just a it's a clear sign of a buyout. You just skip over those when you see them. At least I do. One last one. I, I talked about this one before, but I'll bring it up again. Consumer Staples, uh, Coca Cola is a well known name. It's a Dow stock. I like the pattern it's it, i like here's a nice move up and this looks corrective deep correction right here but then have this impulsive move up it looks like maybe a little bit of a bullish abc pattern right here bullish reversal candle today at right at a 50 percent retracement of that move again you could wait for this to go back to a buy signal turn the signals on as confirmation Probably turn back into a buy signal up in here somewhere. But I, I'm liking that one. If you're looking for a big, a big uh, company to own, decent dividend, you know, if you want to hold it for long term, this, this chart looks pretty good. And it has a 90 strength rank. You know, some of the larger companies sometimes it takes them a little bit of time to get get that higher strength rank. Um, just because they just don't they they don't move they're so large they, they, they so many shares they just don't move as as dramatically as some of those smaller companies do all right i gotta wrap things up sorry i went way long like i said i hope it was beneficial um real quickly here let's see how the because we're almost a half hour before the market closed let's see what the s p looks like Yeah, still looks like a bullish reversal. It closes like this. We should we should get some movement up. And Fridays are usually kind of key. Um, uh, I don't know. It, it depends in the context. For, when you have a big move, if you if you've been dropping for the week and you have a big move down on a Friday. Markets don't typically bottom on a Friday, so usually you're going to open lower on Monday, at least open lower. It may have a bullish reversal, open lower, and then start rallying back up. But you almost always have an open lower on Monday. If you have an up day on a Friday, um, there's a tendency, unless there's some bad news that comes out over the weekend, there's a tendency for the market to open or to move up on, on Monday. You don't necessarily like to see a big gap up on a Monday. Be careful on a gap up on a Monday. Very often, you know, it'll fade throughout the week. Um, a big gap down on a Monday that starts to – sometimes you'll rally back up. Um, anytime you get a big gap, a lot of times you don't want to buy into that gap uh, because you'll you'll often get an opposite move, especially if you if it's a if, if it's already it's already been trending down and you get a big gap down. 
So you, you've already been trending down right here and you got a big gap down. I don't want to necessarily chase that because um, it'll probably bounce. And this one went a little bit low, but it bounced pretty sharply right here. If you're going up and you get a big gap up, I don't want to chase that because you're probably, it's probably an exhaustion gap or an exhaust, exhaustive move. Um, and you can combine that with overbought, oversold signals on your indicators here. You get a gap up and you're in the extreme reversal risk range here, like the dollar. Um, that's, and well, this is getting, getting, getting a bearish reversal candle and you're in an extreme range. There's a very high probability you're going to get a little pullback there. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you back here Tuesday for the next market update. Bye now.